Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the Free to Play cast. We almost didn't know if this one was going to happen. <laughs> it's episode 167. We're recording on the 27th. You'll be watching it on the 28th or later. I'm Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man, your host for today's festivities. And we've got some good and bad, well, mainly just bad, to talk about on this week's show. But first, let's introduce the host first. The mirror image himself, Jason Winter. They have no idea because it's not a mirror yeah, image for them. <laughs> but uh, whatever. I just know that I've got this. I got this nice foot rest here. I'm resting my uh, foot on a uh, Zach's brain in a jar. Oh jeez. So. Yes, Twitter went a little, little crazy yesterday. Also on the line, you know her, you love her. Q. What's up? I do not have anybody's brain in a jar. Yeah, it's been a weird couple of days. So <laughs> let me let me take you through what happened before we get to the news. This is the preliminary A bomb from Mike. Yeah, this is this is definitely. I've had Verizon FiOS phone, internet, TV, and yeah, why do I have a home phone? I work from home for my day job. I have to maintain a landline. So yeah, I got the whole shebang from Verizon FiOS. I've had it for like six years, multiple contracts. Love the service, speeds, awesome, all that jazz. Never had a technical issue. I think once I had to get a new router. Uh, the router went bad. They sent me a new one. No biggie. So last week, in the middle of the week, at like 9.30 one night, the internet just pfft, it just goes out. TV and phone are fine. Okay, so we call them. They do their little reset. It's not coming up. They said, we'll send a tech out tomorrow morning. Great. They send a tech out who says, oh, the internet port on the box inside of your house. It's bad. I'm going to replace the whole box. Fantastic. Thank you. No problem. All this time, I'm like messaging Q through Facebook and Twitter, basically anywhere I can steal three seconds of an internet connection, just trying to say, hey, okay, I'm trying to figure some stuff out here. By the way, here's a couple of things that were in my email forwarded to her for stories and stuff. So they come out, they replace the box, internet goes back up, no problem, great. 20 minutes later, after the tech leaves, of course, the internet collapses and now the phone doesn't work. <laughs> To shorten this story, it is a five-day fiasco where I have five different techs visit my house. On Sunday, the tech was here twice <laughs> because every time they get the service back on within a few hours, the, the internet goes out and then the phone started going out and then finally the TV started going out. They have no clue what's going on. So yesterday, Comcast was here and I had them replace everything. Sad to see Verizon go, but I'm back online! So big kudos to Jason and Q and the rest of the MMO Bomb team for covering for a couple of days when we were <laughs> limited communication, to say the least. You know, I kind of liked it. That's my favorite story. part of that story. What's that? The hornet's nest. Oh, yeah. So like the first three or four tech visits, because of course they want the problem to be in my house, right? It's, they want it to be here. So they rewire the box. They run new Ethernet to a new router. They, they totally rewire my whole house. The second visit Sunday night, he comes back. He gets up on the pole finally. He opens the Fios box. He does some stuff there, and he comes back. He says, well, I've moved your port to the middle because you were right on the end. You were the first customer on this street. And sometimes the end wires get a little jostled and frayed because of everybody working in the box. So we put it in the middle. Uh, also, there was an old hornet's nest in there. So I went ahead and cleaned that out. <laughs> oh my god uh, but they still they never had a clue never solved it don't know what happened it was just my house but we're back up and running let's get on with the news <laughs> uh, continuing with the good news Mike I'm not Mike, Mike, Mike. I know I know Jason and Jason took great pride in sending that Skype message this morning <laughs> I did not I, I took pride at, a at, little at, <laughs> Just at, at Mike's going off his boycott a week ago and then, or two weeks ago. And I could ago. almost hear him grinning <laughs> as he sent me links to it. Now, I had already uh, seen it last night when my internet came back up and I was searching just to kind of make sure, all right, do I need to jump in? Was there something we didn't get to and write an article real quick and touch base with Q and Jason and everything now that I was going to be on the internet again? So this morning, Jason links me. Some wonderful news from Rift. Try on Worlds free to play MMO, and uh, I said, "Yeah, don't don't worry about that. I'm already writing a piece. <laughs> I'm not happy." For those of you that don't know, I had a rather lengthy boycott of Try on Worlds products for almost the the better part of 2015, based on not anything with Rift. I love I loved Rift. I've spent I spent a lot of money in Rift. Um, 
But I didn't like how the company was treating some of its new releases, particularly if you want to put pay-to-win stuff, that that's something we should get out of the way first. It wasn't a pay-to-win thing. If you want to put pay-to-win stuff in your game shop, I'm simply just not going to play that particular game. I'm not going to hold it against all of your products, right, Jason? I mean, that doesn't that doesn't make sense. I'm just not going to play Arcage. But it it was more than that. It was the way the community was handled by the company during some launches. So I boycotted and I didn't play any of their products, including Rift. I ended the boycott in 2016 when MMO Bomber said it was safe to do so. And now Rift does this. What did Rift do? I'm not happy, Jason. <laughs> what did Rift do? Well, they pretty much just built some paywalls. <laughs> And to be fair, I mean, they've had some mild paywall-y type things in there, but in their cash shop. But they've they've been like the souls, and yeah, you can acquire them in game. Blah 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 blah. But if you want to, if you want to be one of those souls, yes, you need to buy them. But you don't have to be one of those souls to play end game content or to do very well at end game content. You play a different soul. You know, it's no big deal. It's a a, a class that's locked. If you want to play that class. Go ahead. The Revenant in Guild Wars 2 might be a good example, right? you got to buy the expansion if you want to play that class, but not playing that class doesn't block you from playing any of the other ones or impede your ability to play any of the other ones. Right. Lotro does the same thing with it whenever they put in a new class. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, to be fair, there is, some, I, there is the argument that there is some gated content, and, and that's fair. Uh, but this is a flat-out paywall queue. So there's two big pieces to uh, Rift's new plan. Earring slots and the Plane Walker water title or item that allows you to equip gear that has the must be a Plane Walker water account. Now previously you were able to get this a couple of ways. You could buy the Nightmare Tide uh, collector sets, right? And it was those were these items were included in there. That was a cash purchase. To be fair and full disclosure, I did not buy that because my boycott was going on at the time. However, I do have it because I was given it as part of press for a preview piece. So full disclosure on why I have it, I did not pay for it. The second way you could get this bad boy is uh, these different pieces is to buy them piece by piece, from the credit store, the cash shop. Okay. The third way to buy them was to farm up void stones in the game and use that currency instead, replacing the time with money. Now keep in mind, this expansion came out over a year ago, Q. Over a year ago now for these items. Two days ago, they announced a change that took effect today. No longer can you use the void stones to purchase these things. So to get access to gear that if you want to make an argument you don't absolutely need you can but ask anybody that raids particularly you need this gear you need to be able to wear gear that is gated behind plain walker water uh, and earrings are stat gear that they help sorry you know it's it's huge stat modifiers across those things and so now you got to buy them or farm up platinum in game to buy a Rex off of somebody, and they had to spend cash to get that, too. So now, it feels like, particularly for new players, because old heads, you know, like me, they don't, they're, okay, fine, you do whatever you want with that stuff, I already have it, but if Q is leveling up behind me and I need her on my raiding team, now Q's got to shell out some money or farm some plat to buy a cash shop item off of somebody that spent money to get these things. What are your initial thoughts on this out of nowhere, in 48 hours we're going to do this, clear paywall in queue. I mean, obviously the lack of notice is really awful. I, I, hold on a second. Stop it! <laughs> Domino! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I mean, obviously that's, I don't, I don't even know why they would do that. Why they wouldn't at least give people time to be like, oh, okay, well, I need to totally, you know, change tack on what I'm doing if I, if I need this gear. But at the same time, too, it does fall into the area of this is something you need in order to be able to, to literally do specific things. And it's not like... <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of competitive things too, right? When you really think about it, like rating, not competitive in the same way as PVP, but it is competitive. 
and the quicker you you get the gear that you need the the you know the sooner you're able to do the things that you need to do to stay competitive against everybody else so they're 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 really taking advantage of the fact that these people kind of have to have this gear like i wouldn't need it i i hop into a game and roam around and you know do solo stuff and whatever it's not gonna affect me whatsoever but yeah for the for the raiders and you know um people who are heavy dungeon people and stuff like that it it definitely makes a difference jason the problem i think isn't in the the fact that this is how it's going to be because on some level I, I sort of think of like ascended gear and guild wars 2 as being kind of the same thing like I can go out and I can grind and get all the mats and whatever I'm going to need to really get all that good stuff, which is a little better than the you know the high-end exotic gear. Or I really could just you know spend cash, uh, convert that into gems, use that to buy gold, and then get all the stuff I need and make all the stuff. So you know, on some level, it's kind of almost the same way. But the problem here is making a change. When people are used to something, especially when they're used to something being free, and you change it to something that's not going to cost money or yeah, technically it doesn't cost money. You can farm out the plaid and buy Rex, whatever. But the fact that you're changing it is what's going to piss people off. Yep. And I, I've, I've interacted over the last few months with a lot of different PR people that try on worlds. I, I kind of wish I think they should be consulted on this sort of thing. Because <laughs> that's what this is. This is just a PR nightmare right now. Yep. As right now it's currently 21 pages of forum PR nightmare. And they tried to squelch the firestorm a little bit by coming out with a statement. And we've praised High res Studios for their honesty on communications quite a bit. I guess we got to praise Tryon Worlds for their blatant honesty on trying to put out this fire. Uh, in short, I'm going to give you a piece of it. It's uh, basically we need money, is what it said. But <laughs> the the exact quote in the the post was: "Having a large team producing amazing things is a benefit to everyone who loves Rift." both those making it and those who play it. But making games like Rift is expensive, and so we need to sell things in-game to pay those folks. We try to offer a variety of services that appeal to a broad selection of folks. Sometimes we try one thing, sometimes we try another, but it's always a learning experience. Oh, they're learning. They're learning, yeah. <laughs> and, and I get it. I mean, if you would have asked me, and in fact, somebody does ask in our questions based on last week's episode for us to give a few examples of what we think is free-to-play done right, since Q, you, uh, Zach, and I had that whole discussion about pay-to-win, and Rift would have been one of my top three at the point. At that point, uh, just clearly, it would have been okay. Yeah, there's some content. It's not required stuff. The gear is always second tier or lower. It's good. But, okay, so maybe it's too good on the respect that nobody's paying, nobody's making money, so you've got to make some changes. This is just a very weird change to make on content that's been in the game for a year now. And then if I was three days away from the dailies I needed to complete to get the Void Stones to buy this stuff, I got hosed with 48 hours worth of notice. Uh, it was, became impossible for me to finish it. Uh, so I'm going to list the... I uh, wrote an article on MMO Bomb. Check it out. Uh, it's, uh, it's probably the best article that's ever been put there. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's it's just me. No show whatsoever. Right, none. None, none. No, it's not. It's not. Jason's a far better editorialist than I am, and I, I accept that. I'm better at the news and the video stuff. That's why we seg segregate the duties here. <laughs> one, one, one cute thing I read, too, about talking about the time frame was uh, yeah. comment someone said was, uh, yeah, because this is a clue that people were thinking about when they were shoveling themselves out from a huge blizzard over the weekend. <laughs> is, right. now, Good point. Now, that, now I have to have my two days to get my... Uh, Good point. <laughs> so stuff. I put together a list of five things that I think are absolutely wrong with this decision and why. You guys, tell me what you think. You, you're first. This one, it's a paywall, pure and simple. As much as the development team wants to, wants to say you can farm money faster than Void Stones anyway, so you can still farm for Plat, the, the in-game money in Rift, to buy Rex, the item that you can buy from the cash shop and then sell to another player so they can use it to buy cash shop stuff. It's just not that simple. Somebody had to pay for Rex with cash, whether it's you or somebody else, and while you may be able to get Rex easily right now in the North American version of the game, although expect those prices to go up soon, uh, ask a friend in, in the EU across the pond here how available Rex is for the free-to-play player. Fair point? Am I nuts? What do you think? No, it's definitely a fair point. And, I mean, obviously I don't know what, you know, the availability of Rex is in Europe, but... Practically if, nil. 
if if it's if it's on you know on the auction house whatever the prices vary greatly so the only people who are getting a set price on an item are the people who are actually paying cash for it yep and that kind of segued into my second point void stones they were a set rate you knew how much you needed rex fluctuates not only in cost based on what the players want to sell it for but also availability so there's also a pl to, to add to that, there's also a plat cap for free players that haven't made a purchase yet in the cash shop store. So if you don't make a single purchase, you may not even be able to farm up enough plat to buy Rex because your character can't carry it. Jason, this one I think kind of hits home for you because you play a couple of games that use this exact type of model. I think it's an unnecessary wall on items that came out in expansion, on an expansion that's a year old now, and it's winding down. If you wanted to try something new going forward, it should have come in the next expansion in my book. Well, first of all, I don't play games that use this exact model. I stay the hell away from them. Well, you, well hold on. This, well, I, I mean a little exactly. further in my point here. You, you, you do here. Yeah, players yeah. still would have hated it. They still would have. But you wouldn't be locking new players out of things that they had actually had the ability to access farming in-game for a year now. In fact, and this is more to what I think you, you play games in this type of model, just make the expansions a required purchase instead. Yeah. Yeah, Souls and all, put it all in there. Even that's a better option than making parts of it. Guild Wars 2, EverQuest, EverQuest 2, all these, these games that are free to play, just charge for the most recent expansion. And you don't run into problems like this, and as long as you're creating compelling content, you're going to make the money, Jason. Well, the only thing I would not do, though, is charge for power, which is what they're doing here. Yep. You have, like you said, there's the earrings and whatever, there are stat gear. Don't charge for, for power. Let people at least be able to, to be able to access them. I guess if you have a level cap increase, you kind of have to then. But even then, maybe you still manage to... Uh, make certain uh, zones unlock or certain like uh, dungeons or something unlocks. So maybe you could still get in and you can actually play with people and so on, and not feel like you're going to be gimped unless you pay money. Because that's that's all it is that 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 is you know that's pretty much the definition of pay to win. If I have to shell out money to gain better stats, even if it's PVE, it's still the same thing. It's it just smells way too much. It veers way too much on the side of pay to win. Totally agree. My last two points we've already talked about. Two days notice, really, that should have been a few weeks. Uh, and this change directly impacts newer players. Those who've been playing uh, for a while and are high-end raiders already, things like that, they already have these items. It's no big deal. They look at it and say, this decision sucks. If this is the decision they're going to make, should I invest time in this anymore because the next decision could impact me? But this particular decision may not impact them, but they, those players still need new blood coming into the game. And this directly impacts new players mm -hmm. in their whole leveling experience. Uh, remember, Rift is free to play. No trials, no tricks, no traps. <sighs> Try on makes world. Me so sad. I know, I, right? Uh, I loved Rift so much. <laughs> I, I can't believe that this is that this is going to stand. I mean, just based on the feedback we're seeing. They're going to reverse it temporarily and give those extra few weeks or something. They're going to do something. They have to, and they may do it by the time this show goes up. Uh, and, and live. So if they've made a change, check out MMOBomb.com. We'll, of course, I'll keep my piece updated to, to reflect any changes. I have to believe they're going to make some type of change here. Uh, next up, Jason, your favorite game. Oh, wait, you've never played. No, I haven't yet. <laughs> but you love to follow it. <laughs> What's going on with Wildstar? Some employees and ex-employees and people that had worked there and swept a floor. Or I don't know. It's just everybody came out of the woodwork a few days ago saying, Carbine Studios may not be the best place to work. I also like watching those videos of you know, bad drivers and sliding and crashing into <laughs> stuff, too. So this is kind of like the same thing. Oh, That's uh, <laughs> low blow. <laughs> but, yeah, there were... Uh, three people on a forum on NeoGAF, which who claim to be Carbine employees or former Carbine employees. And before we get into the whole, oh, they're anonymous, they're, you know, they could be anybody. They have such detailed information and so much of it that they're not just making all this up. Now, maybe they work there and maybe they're exaggerating how bad it was, but I think they were actual employees who worked there and had less than great experiences. Uh, so yeah, basically, you know, they got on about all sorts of things that, that they did wrong. And we, you know, we're aware of, at least in some level, the whole Oh, it's a hardcore mentality. Oh, gosh, why is nobody playing the game? We made it so hard, but nobody wants it now. Yeah, I mean, they talked about uh, programming issues, how they screwed up, how they did test servers. Um, 
uh, let's see, what were some of the other ones? Uh, yeah, they really, really blasted some play, some people, calling them egomaniacs. Uh, talk about how their superiors had not enough experience to be doing the things that, and how people were given the control of certain parts of the company that they shouldn't have had, and it got shifted around all the time. I mean, just one thing after another about how awful it was working at Carbine. Incredibly long hours. Um, what else? They they blew like almost all the launch money. Yeah, just gone. Mm-hmm. Just vanished. Q. Vanished. Well, I didn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike supplied like you know five hundred dollars of it. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's like what four percent? I I don't know. I, it's... And, and even at the very and at the very end too, David Bass was their community manager who has since left and. He's, he's actually, you know, he came on publicly and said, most of this is in line with my experiences. They killed every desire I had to work in the industry anymore. That's harsh. I think he said that right after he left, too, actually. Yeah, he had some... I seem to remember him saying something yeah. very in line with that when he left, where you were just like, wow, he's kind of angry. <laughs> harsh. Yeah, I can actually remember uh, last year, when I'm going to Pack South now, but I remember last year talking with a few people at Pack South at the Arena Net party, which of course is owned by NCSoft, talking with not employees of NCSoft with a couple of players who were pretty high up, they were saying, and this is before it was really bad, they were saying they'd heard not great things at Carbine, and that was a year ago. So it just doesn't seem to have gotten any better. Even free to play doesn't seem like it's doing all that hot for it. Well, we thought it would help, but all, there's also some speculation, of course, from outside parties. We're still awaiting NCSoft's official Q4 report, which should be any day now. But there's also speculation from outside parties, Jason, that those numbers are going to be somewhat surprising. We expected maybe a bump as far as free-to-play goes. Maybe we'll see that, maybe we won't. But some outside forecasters are saying it's more grim than you would have probably anticipated. You mean yeah. the number crunchers who tend to be kind of accurate about these things? Yeah, you know, those <laughs> those folks. KDB Daewoo, the, the investment firm over in Korea yes. who tracks this sort of thing. Yeah, they they came out as saying that basically it would have zero profit for the quarter. Which, you know, or maybe, That's I don't remember if it was that or if it was like even less. Like it's going to be in the red. So even worse. I can't but, imagine yeah. it being in the red during their free-to-play c- conversion. The the Q3 financial financials came out. What was it? Just a, a day or two before, or a day or two after. So the free-to-play bump wouldn't have been seen yet. Well, it, it the, the the quarter ended like two days after the free-to-play happened, right. and the financials came out a month later. But yeah, it, it only accounted for like two days worth of that. So basically nothing. This will be the first time we've really seen what the impact the free-to-play had. Well, we put up a survey on uh, or a poll on MMO bomb asking viewers where they were going to come in when the report finally came out. Jason, what are the results of that one so far? Yeah, I just closed that this morning because in, in anticipation of it coming out soon, it's actually pretty even all around. I just to review, let's see what did they had? They had I think 1700 or so, 1700 million Korean won. That was last year. That was last quarter. Q3. Yes, Q3. So we have uh, for the predictions for this quarter, 30% said 1000 or less. 15% said 1,000 to 1,500, 20% 1,500 to 2,000, 16% 2,000 to 2,500, and 19% 2,500 or greater. So while the majority, or while the plurality says really bad, it's kind of even. It's a little, little towards the negative, but kind of all around that those ranges that I gave. So, but that's part. that's almost 50% of respondees, just just under 50%, like 41 if I'm doing yeah, 40. Yeah, 40, 45% saying that it would be 1,500 or less. Yeah, me. that it's going to be less than what it was in Q3 pl- prior to the free-to-play conversion. I, have we ever seen a game fail that badly in, <laughs> in the quarter that it converts to free-to-play? Well, hang on, because I actually do track all of NCSoft's profits going back to even like... Q, some... what, were, what were you saying? Go ahead. Like, like immediately after free-to-play conversion. Right. It usually goes up because everybody wants to, you know, it's like, oh, I can go check it out now. I mean, I think even, like, with, and they didn't go free-to-play, they went buy-to-play, but I'm pretty sure the Secret Worlds went up afterwards. Yeah. Here's one thing I can show you. Uh, the quarter before they went free-to-play, City of Heroes was 2787. Okay. The quarter they went free-to-play, they were 2812. Not a huge increase, but up. Play. Actually, no, wait a sec. Hold on. Uh, okay, they actually went free-to-play about two and a half months. They had, they had like 17 days of free-to-play in that quarter. 
the, the full quarter after, they were at 3,400. Went way up. And then yeah. they were at 2890, 2855, and then they stopped tracking it. I couldn't see it. So, so it was, one, it was three quarters quarter. before they hit what the pre-free-to-play launch was. They basically had one one slightly good quarter, and then were the same as they were. They were around 2800 the rest of the way. So, and, right, and which then is kind of what you would expect in a lot of these, yeah. but it's, it's that whole curiosity thing of, oh, I can hop in now and do this, and it's not going to cost me anything, so... And free, and it lasted a full year after going free to play with apparently you know still reasonable income. So, yeah. Wow. Ouch. What did what did I say? I don't even remember when when we uh, asked this initial question. I, did I say twelve? I think. I don't, I, I don't remember. No. I think I put mine at like twelve hundred. And Jason said you expect it to go down. Yeah, I was. I admit I was a little surprised. And I, I said I'm just going based on what I see in game. Because of populations and stuff like that. It's not even a game that you can say, well, maybe my server queue isn't populated very well. Because they've only got the one North America PvE server and the one North American PvP server. And PvP is unequivocally broken in Wildstar. It's just, it's a mess. So, and Jason was surprised that I predicted down. This might be one prediction I actually get right. We'll see. I, the, the Koreans agree with me, so... Oh, not looking good. Speaking of not looking good and not knowing who to trust. <laughs> it's just one thing after another today, isn't it? Right. He's a, who do you trust? Who do you trust? Um, John Smedley. I'm going to get that reference. Do you get it? Did... <laughs> of course I get it. Nice. All right. Awesome. Money, money, money. Who do you trust? Uh, <laughs> put it in the comments if you get the reference, too. I'm interested. Uh, John Smedley, former president of Sony Online Entertainment and uh, former president of Daybreak Game and now CEO of Pixel Mage Games. He gets a lot of titles. He gets Very around. outspoken Twitterer. Very outspoken Twitterer. Uh, apparently didn't like micro doesn't like microtransactions, despite what he said on H1Z1, on... Uh, EverQuest on EverQuest 2 on it would just go look at Sony two, yeah just PC go Pro, look at yep, just go look at Sony online's por or Day Daybreak Games portfolio of games despite what he said about microtransactions in every single one of those games uh, he didn't like them even didn't like them at the time and is now telling you about it Quote, I don't like microtransactions because I worked on too many games with them. They change the feeling of development to one where you feel like you have to worry about the business instead of the gameplay. You could just read the comments on our site and have known that. <laughs> that leads to tons of compromises. I hated that. I also hated defending stuff we did to make money to our players. Because they're right. They know we spent too much time focusing on that stuff. Interesting statement, Q. You gotta wonder if there was a meeting at some point at SOE Now Daybreak where they actually sat down and said, hey, this is... I, I don't feel like that meeting ever happened. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 Jason, here's the question I have, though. When, when somebody like John Smedley says this and had spent years being the PR... How do you trust him on other things going forward. You already know that based on his position, and I'm not blaming him, right? Mm -hmm. He was in the position of leadership there. Of course he has to defend those things. Um, those are the business decisions. If he didn't agree with the decisions, I would hope, like Q just said, that there were meetings where he expressed how much he didn't agree with the, this particular decision, and he just got overruled by a board or a vote or whatever. Uh, and he's unfortunately the face and has to, to say, hey, it's okay. But it does, it's, it feels like, like a politician, though. If you spent so much time defending something to me out of necessity because of the role you were in, and now that you're in a different role, you're going to tell me, oh, I always hated it, even when I was saying that. Doesn't that automatically put a little bit of doubt in your head going forward on other things he may say, Jason? Well, I mean, as long as he comes out with his new product and it's a nice, you know, stable kind of thing where he launches a good Kickstarter that's good from the start, doesn't have to make a bunch of changes as it goes along, and it runs the whole time, and 
Oh, wait, none of that happened. <laughs> <laughs> they had to change their reward tiers like three times in a week, and then they canceled the whole thing because I wasn't making enough money. <sighs> so right now it's just like, what what even are you doing? The, the, that Kickstarter had only been out for about a week too, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So they didn't research Kickstarter at no, all. No, not at all. I could tell them as much time as I spent looking at Kickstarter stuff for Game Breaker, you, you get a bump at the beginning and then people just let it ride for a while until they get to like the, the near end of the Kickstarter and go, oh, this is actually going to make it. Let me help pile more money onto it. Like that's how Kickstarter works. But even that part of it, but even the part of it where they had to change the reward tiers, like they start, they have a $20 game. That was going to be the retail price of the game. And their lowest tier was a $25 package, which, hey, you get the game. No, 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 you need, you need a low, low tier where it's just like, they, hey, guys, you put, your, you put your thing on here, and we're super appreciative, and we might, you know, send you a tweet or something. But and they added that later. They, well, it might not have been the lowest tier, but that was the lowest tier where you could get the game. But they added a $15 tier where you get the game. Hey, thanks for supporting us early. You get basically $5 free. But the fact that they had to add that like a day or two in, it goes with what you said. They didn't research Kickstarter. They didn't know how it works at all. Yeah. So it's but like that's just what it says to me. They they and they were going to launch the whole game by October. Or the game's going to launch in October, which means <laughs> ideally, and and that would be good, right? That the game is pretty much already done by this point, and they're just trying to get the last little bit of money to finish it up. Like ideally, that's what you want to do at Kickstarter, and then be able to get it out the door. But still, not having any under understanding of how Kickstarter works is really bad when you're trying to launch a Kickstarter. And even almost to the larger part of it, and this is something I've been thinking about a little bit over the past few days, like, I, I, you know, I don't go back with Smedley back to the Star Wars Galaxies days. I don't, I don't do any of that. I didn't really start paying attention to him as a person and SOE a whole lot until about 2009 or so. So when they did this thing where they were saying, okay, we're going to switch everything over to free-to-play, we're going to make all our games free-to-play, I thought that was great. I thought it was a big AAA company, they're going to take this leap, they're going to go into the future. I thought, this is a pretty good thing. And he posted some AMAs, and he did some other stuff where he said, you know, we researched this stuff. We looked into how free-to-play games work, and we think we can make it work. Now, a few years later, seeing where Daybreak is, where they're not releasing anything really, and seeing how this also kind of collapsed on him, I, I don't want to say he's, I mean, he's the smart guy. I don't doubt that. But I just wonder what he's researching when he does this stuff, and he comes out and says, we know that, if he comes out and says, we know this is a good way to go, I don't believe that anymore. Yeah, you know, like just don't. I've always said with Smedley, like with the stuff he says and does, you know, because he's very out there about a sure. lot of stuff, and he'll just and and the the phrase that I use all the time is "poor Smeddy always tries so hard," <laughs> and it's it's kind of what it feels like. He he tries, he really tries, but there's just there's just something missing in the execution ninety nine percent of the time, and it is probably that it's 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 the research factor. It's like getting in there and going, is this exactly what we need to do? Like I don't know, maybe he gets way too excited about what it is that he's doing, and he just barrels right in, and and then suddenly goes, oh, wait, that's not how it works. <laughs> there, there was something I saw when I when I first like talked to him when I was at SOE Live a few years ago, and he. Yeah, he came. He said, "He said I'm a gamer. I like playing it. I like playing Battlefield, and that inspired Planetside 2 and so on." And I thought, "Okay, that's cool. He's a CEO, but he's also a hardcore gamer, and that sort of thing." I think it's like that sometimes. He's he's a passionate hardcore gamer and just jumps in with both feet, maybe. And maybe right, which is something always... gamers do all the time. Yeah. Like you know, we we obviously do it with games where we're like uh, manual, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. So it's not it's not unusual that that carries over to gamer life. You know, where we're like, "Oh, I got this figured out. That's not a problem." It just feels very used car salesman-ish. Mm. And even Hellsworth says it on the, the comments on the piece on MMObomb.com. It says, so should I believe him the first time or should I believe him now? <laughs> yeah, was he... I mean, it's a fair question. Uh, it is. Uh, the new game that, that they are creating over there um, at Pixel Mage, though, is not free to play. So we unfortunately won't be covering much of the game itself, but... We still like to keep tabs on uh, Smedley and what he's doing. I actually have a quote here from, I'm trying to find it, from a conversation I was having with the uh, PR team over at Pixel Mage when we were getting initial word of the, the new game and the potential new Kickstarter prior to everything. Let me try and find it here. Because I asked them, is the game, uh, let me just do this, we'll search for... Uh, Pixel, sure, why not? That should do it in the old email. Yep, up, oh, nope, 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 <laughs> nope, nope, that didn't nope, do it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. How many Pixel games are there? Right. 
That's like searching my email for the word voxel. Uh, all right, here it is. So I uh, replied asking, hey, you know, this new stuff, I, uh, is it going to be free to play? And uh, his quote was, know that it will be a pay to play game uh, that you'll pay once and you'll, you'll have access to it. I believe this is where MMOs in the future are going. So. This is an interesting thing. I mean, that doesn't ever really work for an MMO. Don't they all have to have some kind of, you know, you talk about what Guild Wars 2 used to be, what Secret World is, Elder Scrolls Online, don't they have to have some kind of microtransactions or sub fees or something as they go along? So, well, it's obviously not a free-to-play game, but with the Secret World, um, which sure. is pretty much what I'm playing most right now, and it's probably one of the few games that I think made a, transac uh, a transition that didn't hurt it. Um, it started out as a as a um, you know a pay to play with microtransactions. Yeah, like that's this one. Where they started it, and then when they transitioned it, it became buy to play, with still buying little microtransactions, but then also buying the updates, which they call issues at like five dollars a pop. Yeah, here's here's the exact emails, uh, and I'm not going to give the the PR people's names because they're usually behind the scenes and they don't they don't want that type of exposure but my question was will these endeavors be free to play if not we can cover the initial news on mmobomb.com uh, as a free to play only site as a where is smedley now because we do want to get that information to our readers uh, type piece but I really can't cover the game itself much if there's a box fee slash retail price the reply was just heard back they're buy to play not free to play just twenty dollars and no microtransactions to quote Ever. to quote smedley Quote, it really is where MMO style games will be going business wise soon. End quote. I don't I don't understand I don't... that because you still have to have money coming in to pay your developers if you want to keep making content for the players. And if you're not making content for the players, they're not gonna stay. I would assume that since it's they he's calling out no microtransactions, that you're gonna see something similar to the secret world without the microtransactions yeah. in the cash shop. It's the next issue is X dollars if you wanna buy it. The next issue is X dollars if you wanna buy it. They just won't have those consumables and costumes and, and the typical microtransactions action stuff they i mean that's better, the only way i could see it out like yesterday <laughs> right because as soon as anything else comes to that game that costs money in any way reddit's gonna explode uh finally before we move on to the bombs real quick we don't have a ton of information but nexon announced that they are releasing a new free-to-play game riders of icarus the big comp the big uh the big deal with this one is mount combat in MMOs, and I don't really want to talk about the game, and we're all going to watch it and see how it develops and such, but, uh, and we don't have a lot of details right now anyway, uh, but I wanted to get your take real quick, right, I want to get your two takes on combat, mounted combat in MMOs, because we've seen that already in quite a few MMOs, uh, Lord of the Rings Online introduced mounted combat in their Riders of Rohan stuff, and... Uh, there's other games that do that. Arc Age has got it. Black Desert Online is going to have it. Do you guys... I generally just don't have a positive experience with mounted combat, and I can't think of a game off the top of my head that I've played mounted combat in and was like, oh, that was actually pretty fun. And I, So I wanted to get your take, if, if you guys have. Jason? It's, it, the one thing that I think you can't do in mounted combat in MMO is have it be, also be tab targeting. That just doesn't work for me, because that's what Lotro did, because obviously it was a tab target game. You talk about Arcade, probably is the same way. I haven't played mounted combat there. But I think you have to be able to, you know, guide your mount in a direction and aim your lance at the other guy or whatever. I just don't think being having it at some angle where you just have to tap the guy and hit your hit with your weapon or whatever, I don't think that works. I think it's going to have to at least be some kind of action cop, a little more like Mountain, mountain Blade or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, I think, that's a, I think that that's the big issue, too, is that you're so used to your hand-to-hand -hand or your, your personal... Uh, combat on, on foot infantry I guess that it's almost like another kind of thing it's like we talk about underwater combat or aerial combat having to work that in to a game that's designed to be a, a foot combat game is difficult so if they if they do that from the start if they could actually incorporate that into the initial you know design which sounds like they're going to because it's going to be a big thing big part of it then I think it could work out but as a kind of an add-on to you don't want to make it so that people would rather do the foot combat because it's easier to figure out Q. So that's a no from Jason. He hasn't played good mounted combat in an MMO. No. So I think one thing that should be pointed out here is that this is mounted aerial combat. So we got the flight. 
So there, there, there's the whole flight aspect of it too, which is when, so it's mounted combat in three dimensions, <laughs> right? I, when you sent it to me, I actually got almost a little excited because I saw aerial combat, and that was all they had in the email, and I was thinking it was going to be, you know, like a, almost an updated version of you know doing stuff in Ion, yeah. you know, which was fun but needed things to make it more fun. So I was thinking maybe it'd be that, and then I saw that it was on mounts, and I basically went, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like there's a MOBA that we profiled like a few years ago that was going to be the same thing. It was like you choose your guy, and you choose your aerial guy, and your mount, and you just go along. It's kind of the same thing. It's not really good. Yeah, they're mounts, but they might as well just be a character with additional abilities, it sounds like. If there's no difference between mounted and unmounted combat, it, it's World of Warplanes. If you if you can think of an MMO with uh, good mounted combat, put it in the comments below. Don't say Black Desert Online; it's not out yet. Mike, why don't you show the why don't you show the trailer for this game? Oh wait, they have nothing on their YouTube channel. <laughs> nope. Uh, let's move over and do the weekly bombs. I'm gonna go first. Mine's fast. A bomb. Try on worlds. Get the fuck out, Jason. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's such a negative show today. I'm gonna be nice. <laughs> I'm going to give a dub bomb to World of Warships, which I've gotten back into lately. They're doing a new promotion. They call it Project R. Uh, R. No, it's not like that. But, uh, basically, you go in, it gives you basically a bunch more different achievements to do. Uh, they have this little track that shows how many pearls people are collecting so that we get all sorts of different prizes. It's just got me back into it, got me playing again. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun still. Awesome. Q. Q. Um, I'm actually going to give a devalm to your internet coming back up before Jason <laughs> burned everything down. <laughs> Poor Zach. We'll have to put him back Poor together for the next, uh, next show. I had no clue what was going on with the Zach stuff. I was <laughs> like, my Twitter was exploding. And I'm like, what is, what are they talking about? I wish I could see <laughs> Skype right now. And know actually, no, none of that was in Skype. None of it was on Skype, yeah. Although it was probably really confusing because I dropped a Doctor Who reference in the middle of it. <laughs> Uh, from the viewers, we've got lots of bombs and questions and answers because we talked about pay to win and what constitutes pay to win last week, and a bunch of viewers chimed in. Hawk Fun says, one, lock boxes, don't have a problem with it. Two, that time problem is the thing that makes me want to st uh, stop playing Warframe. Wait 12 hours, wait 12 to wait thir 36. Oh, wait, in the case of Yin Yang Frame. Oh, wait 12 more hours, 36 more hours, 36 more, please. Three, no problems for cosmetics. In fact, a matter of fact, SWOTOR, I love cosmetics and SWOTOR, but the SWOTOR armor sets and weapons are very well implemented, but cosmetics usually have better effects. And four, as a free-to-play player, if you can't play the game uh, at its fullest, SWOTOR gives the 55 history for free. Uh, don't know if Revan went free-to-play. Uh, you, you're fine. You can play that. I think the game can't actually be considered free-to-play. <laughs> HTTP F2P. <laughs> Go ahead, Q. Uh, Hellsworth says, Hey, folks, I look at F uh, free to play MMOs pretty much like I look at a mall to bring up a metaphor. And just about the same way that someone built the mall's walls and I got paid, I define those to be Kickstarter money. For example, other ways of financing a base game can be included here. Now, you go to the mall, download the game, and play the content, walk around and see the items on sale, and come back home. That, be, that being play the game, content and see if the game play in the system fits and what you like or not. But once you come back home, you kind of need to wash your hands before you eat. <laughs> what kind of a so, mall are you going to? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No, no, no. That, that, there's been, some you know, balls, pretty like, nasty I'm people dead. running around out there, so that's a good habit to have. Um, so you did bring those small f free soaps that anyone could pick up from the... What mall gives out small free soaps, though? <laughs> a, a mall that requires you to wash your hands immediately upon visiting it. <laughs> or you could have the gel, but for the gel, of course, you have to pay. The same thing goes in for in-game monetization here, I guess. You know, some people will pay because they prefer the nice smell, and others might prefer to spend their money elsewhere in the mall. What seems to not... What seems to be not well understood is that free-to-play games nowadays should be seen as a store and not as a product. You go there, have a nice time, maybe buy something you like, but not be frustrated by the random blocks because nobody likes to be put on hold. 
either that being the block on the game's content or traffic congestion in real life in the same way it comes pay to win. Just imagine you're in traffic and then there's this car that goes by the special rich people lane. Don't just don't do the lane at all. But if people will pay me for the rich people lane, why shouldn't I? <laughs> I Are you related to John Smedley? Uh, go, go ahead, Jason. I had a baseball metaphor I was going to use for free to play, but this wasn't so much better. <laughs> anyway, George Trink says, would have liked to hear all of you say what game you think does free to play well, like a top three each. Well, not Rift, right? Yeah, it might, <laughs> Rift would have been in my top three. I got Path of Exile. It would have been Rift. Um, Guild Wars 2. And Guild Wars 2, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, you, you've you got that big content gate as far as the expansion, but I'm okay with the whole everything's free to play except for whatever our most recent expansion is. I don't mind that model at all. I think most MOBA models are fine. Yeah, yeah. Sure. No, not all, but most, yeah. Speaking of that, League of Legends pulling in bajillions last year. <laughs> Crying out loud. Uh, Lith, Lith Sung So says, F-bomb, ooh, drop the rare and elusive F-bomb, to Blade and Soul for North American server issues and the community being shit. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. So, don't, Lith, any, any MO at launch, basically. Lith, you can say whatever you want here. You don't have to hold back like that. You don't, <laughs> you can, this is a safe place, a safe place to talk. Go ahead, Q. Uh, Kanzika. It is pay to win when something you buy from a cash shop is outright better and there is no alternative in game. True. And that's kind of where we landed last week. Jason. Sanjay Nowbutt says, You got it all wrong. The issue with Terra was that they bundled class balance with the content patch. The latest class is completely broken and has killed off the little PvP it had remaining and basically rendered every other class useless in PvE. A class that can auto block while attacking has infinite staggers, KD and KU. I don't know what those mean. I can out DPS every class in the game with two self heals. The brawler made every other class pointless, and the K Terra class balance is what people were genuinely waiting on if you read all the posts. Where brawlers get a 30 to 40% damage nerf, and they remove the auto block and reduce the debuff Jackhammer gives on endurance. Uh, that'd be knock down and knock up. And uh, Sanjay, thank you for giving us a little insight there into Terra, because the posts we were reading led us to believe the thing that most people were looking forward to was the hard, ma hard mode Forsaken Isles, but if the balance was part of that patch, we definitely appreciate you, uh, you adding that for us. Uh, question of the week last week. We've had a plethora of card games and even in other games using cards come out in 2015. How would you make a unique card game these days? I should probably have Jason write a piece on this. Oh, man, I'm, looking at, I'm, I'm not even looking at the answers yet. They're going to anger me so much. Uh, Koroth21 says, well, truth be told about your question of the week, I would make a card game like one of the best fighting card games I have played, Final Fantasy VIII Card Battling. It was one and still is my favorite card battling games. You have a 3x3 three three board to put your cards down on. You both dealt 5 to 7 card. You're both dealt 5 to 7 cards and then your cards have attack power 1 to 10 or X on the card. Your card damage is on it all the way around it. Some of them have more than others and some of the cards have one or few damage points on it. For anyone who's ever played it, you'd know what I mean. Then you would play 3 games best of 2 out of 3 win. I'd also add in a team battle one to it where you could have a 5x5 five five or a 6x6 six six board, not sure which yet for a tag team, so you and your friends can play. The amount of cards you could make for it would be uh, 1,000 upon 10,000 and etc, etc, etc. You can even add in specials on the card like Poison, Sleep, Slow, Burn, Frost, all kinds of crazy things. It's one card game that would last forever and would leave all the card games nowadays crying. Just Good saying. old triple triad. Yep, I remember that. And actually, there was a physical version of that that was only released in Japan, but I got my hand on a few cards at one point. And it is in Final Fantasy XIV. So. It is in Final Fantasy. Oh, okay. Can you play it on your phone, too? Yeah, uh, in in uh, Japan, yes, you can. <laughs> Go ahead, Q. Uh, tell us short. <laughs> I would make a card game with gladiators. You would have a gladiator battling in an arena, either drawn from your hand or pre-assigned, depending on how it worked out with development-wise. Then cards would be your special moves, buff, heals, etc., each type with cooldowns affecting the battle in different ways. Each gladiator would have base stats, equipment, and skills that could be chosen to execute randomly or predetermined strategically going in, and those cards would be instants on top of that. Gladiators would level as with their skill, etc. New equipment would be purchased with winnings. Players would manage their gladiator stables, their gladiators, which events to partake in, etc. Uh, certain matches would have a permadeath chance. 
love the permadeath, and would offer greater rewards. Also, winning players could call for an execution vote, allowing the computer to generate a percent chance of death vote, resulting in execution of the loser's gladiator, and an infamy rating for the play oh, player's that gladiator. Oh, that piss me vote. off. <laughs> the ratings would affect the execution vote of their gladiators in the future, resulting in a higher chance of them being executed than certain tournaments would be by invite only for gladiators with high infamy ratings for grand tournament and prizes. They wouldn't offer things obtainable in other ways, but in large amounts. Each stable would have popularity ratings, etc. Each card would be given a score. Each hand would have a score limit. Uh, do you want powerful cards in your hand, or would you prefer more mid-range or lots of lower range effects? Obviously, balance would take time and research. Overall, something a bit more than build your deck play and match and increase or decrease your ranking. That sounds an awful lot like Gladiators Online without the shitty combat that they added to the game. <laughs> Just like managing a stable of Gladiators through cards. I would rather have done that than to play the combat. Go ahead, Jason. Neil Phantom says, I would love to see a card game with RPG elements, dungeon exploring, raids, leveling, etc., with equipment slash magic cards for your character cards. All cards in the game would be craftable via drops from dungeons, raids, and PvP even, with a trade system that takes card rarity value into account to avoid unwanted third-party farmer-seller or real money transactions. Example, you can only trade rarity 6 against another rarity 6 card. I find that not enough card games use this feature or use it the wrong way. Cash Shop don't include cosmetics like alternative card backs or ease of life features like additional deck slots. There would be a story related to the PvE content, not just random dungeons here and there to compete for material, but a real fleshed out storyline. Uh, by the way, if any developer wants to use this idea to make a game based on this, go ahead. I will play it even by the cosmetics if they are good looking. Uh, we have to have a disclaimer on all the saying it is, you're, if you submit an idea, it is not, uh, not you lay, give up any claim to it, etc. etc. <laughs> P.S. I know games of similar ideas were already made in the mobile gaming world. Most, if not all, are either pay to win or pretty limited to what you can do without paying, and I'm staying away from that kind of game. Close stuff found to this idea was Sword Girls, but then again had a lot of pay to win elements like cards you could only get by buying packs. See, I've always liked the idea of a PvE in a card game, uh, and then I played Hex that you know that was their big thing, and I'm just I'm just not seeing it really add anything for me now that yeah, I'm I mean, playing it's, it's, it. Just like any PvE in any kind of MMO type game, you're going to run out of it soon. Yep. There needs to be something else to it. So. King Blank says, make a physics... I love this one. Make a physics-based card game with different weighted cards. You throw them at your opponent to damage them. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an idea we can all get behind. Question of the week this week. We've talked about it on the show a little bit today. So do you consider games like Guild Wars 2, EverQuest, EverQuest 2, and other titles that charge for the most recent expansion, do you consider those free-to-play? We cover them because they are free-to-play in the, the base sense of the game. But do you consider them free-to-play if you have to buy the most recent expansions? Put your answers to the question of the week. Any questions you've got for the hosts and comments to anything we've said, don't forget your weekly bombs. A-bomb for something terrible, dub bomb for something great. Like, Try on Worlds would be an A-bomb, as an example. You can use them. Put them in the comments below. Until next week, gang, where can uh, everybody find you, Q? Uh, hanging out on Twitter, Quintlin. Mr. Winter. And I'm on Twitter at WinterInformal. Woot! I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me on Twitter at MagicMan1, M-A-G-I-C-K-M-A-N-N-1. -N -N or come on over to MMOBomb.com. Check out all the articles, giveaways, first look videos, and other episodes of the Free to Play cast there. Until next week, gang, stay safe. And we'll see you on the servers. I'm <laughs> sorry.